Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Cops identify body found in Clarendon, Gully Behind Cemetery. The police have identified the male body that was found in a gully at the rear of the newborn cemetery in Hins Clarendon. The deceased has been identified as Leroy Brown, otherwise called Dave Ray, a 30-year-old farmer from First Street in New Bowens. It was reported that about 7.30 a.m., residents found the body and summoned the police. On arrival on the scene, the police said the body of the male was seen in a state of decomposition in the node. Police said the body was floating around down in the gully with black cloth around his hands. While processing the scene, cops discovered that the throat was slashed and there were several stab wounds to the back and right hand. The body taken to Mapin Hospital, where it was confirmed dead and then taken to the morgue. Police said Brown was reported missing by his mother about 5 p.m. on Thursday. The mother reported that about 1.45 p.m. the previous day, he left home to visit his farm but did not return home. A search was subsequently conducted for him later the day, but he was not found. JP's gun goes missing, cops launch probe. The police have launched a probe after the firearm for popular justice of the peace was stolen in Clarendon on Monday. The gun, a Glock 17, with a magazine containing 16 9mm rounds, was stolen between 10.15 p.m. and 11 p.m. when the JP fell asleep in his motor car, the police said. It was reported that the JP was at a party in the parish when he and a friend left to go to their homes. On their way, they stopped under a street light near a bar and the friend went inside to buy a drink for the JP, who removed his firearm and placed it on the driver's side floor mat. The JP dozed away and was awakened by his friend a few minutes later and they drove off. The JP reported they dropped his friend home and went to his house. It was reported that after arriving home, he stretched his hand down on the mat to retrieve his firearm. However, he discovered that it was not where he placed it. He go out of the car and searched the vehicle, but the gun was not found. The police were summoned and investigations into the matter commenced. 16 subjects could not save him. Robert Jackson's younger brother was killed about 10.45 p.m. on Thursday while he had calm and solid demeanor initial, he broke down in tears when he began relating how he knew that he wouldn't be his brother's tragic fate. His brother, 25-year-old Shamar Fletcher, is reported to have been involved in a shootout on Third Street in Trenchtown, which resulted in his death and that of Corporal Oliver Mullins, who was a part of a team from the Kingston Western Police Division. The cops were reportedly responding to a call in the area due to gang feuds when they were attacked by gunmen believed to be members of federal gang in Rima. I can't tell anybody this. I was seeing this coming, Jackson told reporters while crying. I saw it coming, but I couldn't do nothing but pray. I never see it coming so quickly though. I will always love my brother. My brother always checks up on me, and I always check up on him no matter where I am. That's all I have to say, he continued. Police have not confirmed whether Fletcher, who has a six-year-old son, was a member of the federal gang. Investigators said that another man who was involved in the shootout escaped. According to sources, the police entered a yard on Third Street and were shot at. Friday afternoon, bloodstains were seen on a tree where Fletcher is said to have bled out and on the steps outside the yard. Meanwhile, Jackson laughed when he was told that his brother was healed as Pastor Fletcher by his peers during his high school years because of how he carried himself and his dedication to church. The grieving brother related, that Fletcher had the same personality at home in his earlier years and questioned what engendered the fate-defining change. Fletcher is a youth that always was good with one in our family. Fletcher is a youth that always tried to make the family happy. My brother has 16 subjects, Jackson told reporters, of the former Colabar High Outstanding student. My community is a community where you have to be strong. If you are not strong in this community, things like these will happen. Fletcher is a youth who grew up in the community from your baby. My mother grew five of us with Fletcher. We slept on one bed and we never had a problem with that. My mother grew Fletcher very good. Anything that is nice, that is Fletcher. When Fletcher's mother, Michelle, returned from work Friday afternoon, she was a woman of just a few words. We are supposed to bury no child and then for bury me, she told reporters. She later shared that her son had planned to join the police force about three years ago. But when they come here to go to back on trek, the people in the residence tell them otherwise. Jackson added that he recognized a change as Fletcher got older. Fletcher always take telling as a youngster, but from Fletcher turn adult, no one can talk to Fletcher. 
Fletcher is a youth that go to church baptized, so I don't know what's happened with Fletcher. I don't know if the community made Fletcher like this. You have to fight to live for your life in, some, in certain communities. I can tell you, if you don't stand up strong, people push you to do things, and you don't want to do, and I just thought I feel rich, my brother, he said. In an emotional admission, Jackson told reporters that after running a poll of the law several times, he had hoped his brother would have used him as an example of what not to do. My brother never learned from my mistakes. I went to jail several times, and I warned my brother that that place is not a nice place. I came from jail last year. I did five years behind bar for a murder that they had accused me of. But it is Almighty God and my brother prayer and my family prayer that made me free, he said. People push him around, telling him to do this, that, and all these things. My brother got to jail one time, and I look at him and I tell him, you need to learn. You need to sit back and look into yourself. But sometimes it's just how life go. But Fletcher's younger sister, Shanine Oliver, has a very hard time accepting reality. He's my mother's third child and I'm the fourth one. So when other two departed, it was me and him. We go to school together, we go to church together. He got baptized and was in church for a couple of years. He went to school and did his subjects. He actually had 16 subjects. He was some great moments and memories that we shared. I am happy people that wash his clothes whenever he wants something is me in reach out to and all these stuff the 19 year old told reporters. Oliver, she said, doesn't know what to say about her brother's death or how to take it. It's not an easy one for me because he was somebody that is always there for me, somebody that I can talk to. Even with my schoolwork and all of those stuff, he's a person I look up to. It's not easy right now for me now. I don't know where I stand. I'm in a phase where I'm still in shock. Nothing really hits me yet to really hit me that he's dead. May just have his seem for myself for really hit me. As she waits a piece, she clings to memories. It affects me in many ways. There are flashes of memories that we share together, especially the ones where we go to church and all of that, me coming from school and him helping me to my homework. The bond got thicker in adult life when we started sharing one another's thoughts and all of that, she said. Former Executive Director of Kingston Restorative Club, KRC, Warren Seymour, told the reporters that Fletcher's case is a prime example of what has been shedding light on their years in the inner city communities. We are losing our young men. Gangs are not targeting the don't want. They are targeting the ones that are bright. They are targeting the ones that are capable of thinking, he said. Seymour said the youngsters living in inner city communities are caught in a vicious battle against crime and they are constantly being recruited by gangs. The KRC was formed in response to the dramatic economic and social deterioration of downtown Kingston in the mid 1970s and early 1980s. The company then established the Inner City Development Project in 1986, a 10-year urban economic and physical development initiative which assisted many inner city children with schooling and employment. Seymour, chairman of the Central Branch Olive School added, I am speaking from experience from working in the inner city. Historically, the bad men have used the young boys. The boys ages 8 to 10 years, those are the ones I'm worried about. The bigger ones can reason a bit and so on, so they can escape that. The younger boys get trapped. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell.